Hi and welcome to a UCL physics revision video about superposition and beat frequencies. Why do we see ripples appear in ponds? Why do we see such distinct interference patterns emerge from double slit experiments? Why do we hear such odd sounds in trying to tune a guitar? All of these phenomena can be explained by taking a look into the weird and wonderful world of waves. And today, we'll focus on one of the most fundamental principles of waves called superposition and one particular consequence called beats. To begin with though, let's do a quick recap on what we learned about in SHM. Let's consider a spring being driven into motion by a harmonic oscillator, with a damping mechanism which has been included to cause resistance to motion. The most general form for the equation of SHM, including a driving and damping force, can be described by the following differential equation. It seems complicated, right? So what does this all mean then? Well, psi represents the displacement of the spring from its equilibrium position. The first term represents an acceleration of the spring downwards. The minus s psi term represents the magnitude of the restoring force acting against the direction of motion. The minus b d psi over dt represents the damping or resistive force, and the f0 cos omega t is a harmonic driving force. If we set the damping and driving force to zero, we get the following general solution, where a is the amplitude of the wave, and the omega t plus phi is the phase used to describe the location of the wave within a certain wavelength. We'll need this later when we have a little look at superposition and beats. So why did we see those ripples occur in ponds? And why did we see those interesting fringes appear in the double slit experiment? These phenomena are a consequence of the superposition principle of waves. The superposition principle states that the net response produced by two or more separate waves at a given time and place is equal to the sum of the individual wave displacements. So let's consider two harmonic waves, psi a is equal to a cos omega t plus phi, and psi b is equal to b cos omega t plus phi, and see what's happening. Say we want to obtain the resultant wave produced by a and b, psi a b, when they oscillate with each other at the same time and place. To do this, we sum the individual waves together and produce a net wave function a plus b cos omega t plus phi. And now, onto something really cool. Let's listen to that guitar tuning sound once again. One string has already been tuned to a particular frequency and is played at the same time as one with a different frequency. So what causes that periodic variation in the volume of the sound? This phenomena is known as beats and is the direct consequence of the superposition principle. So when a person hears a beat frequency, it sounds like a periodic variation in the volume. Guitar players use this to their advantage by listening to beat frequencies to tune guitar strings to their correct frequencies. When the variations in volume become less frequent, the two tones are now more in tune with each other. So now for some maths. Let's recall the SHO differential equation. What if now we had two oscillating driving forces instead of one? Well, the equation would look something like this. Let's consider two driving forces with the same amplitude and phase but different frequencies. We'd obtain a phenomena known as beats. So from what we learn about from SHM, we can now assume that the displacement can be written as the sum of the individual oscillations. So psi is equal to a cos omega 1 t plus a cos omega 2 t. So the red wave represents psi 1 and the blue wave represents psi 2. So taking a out as a common factor and using the formula for the sum of two cosines, we can rewrite the displacement as 2a cos omega 1 plus omega 2 over 2t cos omega 1 minus omega 2 over 2t. We will now define two new angular frequencies where omega equals omega 1 plus omega 2 over 2 and delta omega equals omega 1 minus omega 2 over 2. So the resultant function looks a little something like this, where psi is equal to 2a cos omega t cos delta omega t. So what does this even mean then? Well let's take a look at the form of the resulting oscillation. The purple wave represents the cos omega t term, and that's an oscillation at an average frequency. And the green wave represents a cos delta omega t term, and is known as the envelope. So the amplitude of the sound is varying as a result of the envelope, and we see maxima, where the sound is loudest, and minimas, where we will hear no sound at all. This explains why we heard points where we could hear such distinct changes in volume when the guitar was tuned. And the actual beat frequency is just the difference between the frequencies of the oscillation, so F1 minus F2. Like any good physicist, we'll need to test this out experimentally. We've set up an experiment using two variable oscillators connected to an oscilloscope and two speakers. By varying the frequency between the two oscillators, we'll be able to see and hear beats frequency for ourselves. 
In order to conduct this experiment, we'll need one oscilloscope, two oscillators, and two speakers. Set the first variable oscillator to 630 Hz and plug the cable into the oscillator. Plug the output of the oscillator into channel 1 of the oscilloscope. This is what the 630 Hz wave looks and sounds like. Set the second variable oscillator to 621 Hz and plug the cable into the second oscillator. Plug the output of the second oscillator into channel 2 of the oscilloscope. And this is what the 621 Hz wave sounds and looks like. So now, combining these oscillations, we can hear and see the beats frequency. Pretty cool, right? Thanks for watching our video on superposition and beat frequencies. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and make sure you like and subscribe.